Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome to Monday morning. Uh, today we're going to have some fun with Eleventy and work through some performance stuff uh, because I found out my site measures up okay but could measure up much better on their uh, new leaderboard for performance. So I'm excited about that. Um, so we're going to be doing some responsive image stuff. We're going to be doing, I might look at getting us into critical CSS and some other stuff. And Nancy's here already pretty early. So everyone say hi to Nancy. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, probably have to do some research into 11D plugins for responsive images. We're going to be doing Cloudinary probably for our uh, image host because right now it's just serving the full size images from my images directory. So we'll want to have that solution and I've been meaning to play with that anyway. So I'm sure we'll have some hiccups along the way, but let's go ahead and start diving into that. Um, and this is, if you haven't seen it, the uh, 11 built with 11D site. So 11D.dev, um, there's a place where you can enter in a pull request and get your site listed. And every Sunday, uh, um, Zach Leatherman comes in, he updates it, and he brings in all the new sites. And he runs, I think he said, five different speed tests against it and averages them to see like where everyone falls. And so in this case, uh, there are two, uh, about 230 sites they've tested. Right now, the Lighthouse score, the median is actually 99 out of 100. And the mean is 95.5, which my site's bringing down a little bit. So that's another reason to, uh, to kind of get that up a little faster. Uh, but we can come, we can find mine, uh, brianlrobinson.com down here. We are number 187 uh, on the list. And so I want, I want to break into the top 100 if I can. Uh, and some of them are definitely like on the smaller side, like one of the top ones is Phil Hawksworth's, uh, where is it, time site, right? So where are you, Phil? Let's see, James that comment engine, where is it? Set your watch by, right? So this site is pretty small and it doesn't really take a whole lot. Um, so obviously like beating that's gonna be pretty hard, but getting into the top 100 shouldn't be that big a deal. Oh, Todd, your site made the list. Uh, ooh, let's see. Oops. Find Todd L. Nice. You're about 30 spots ahead of me. So, so we gotta work on that. We gotta get up and running. See if we, again, like I want to break into that top 100. That's the goal. Uh, to be to be a little higher up there. Also, let me know how the uh, how the music is. I feel like it's a little loud in my headphones, so it might be a little loud for y'all too. We'll bring it down some. Um, so yeah, some of the things, let's go ahead and open up uh, my site real fast. We'll run an audit just in Google uh, uh, DevTools. And I, I've already done this once, but I figured let's go ahead and do it on stream. So I'm going to generate a report just for performance. The main things, and one of the things that I need to work on is the, um, is the image rendering, because my images are where the brunt of my load is coming from. Um, but we'll see that in depth here in a second. All right, so first contentful paint's great, meaningful paint's fine, speed index is pretty low, uh, but we come down here and we look at like serve images in not next gen formats. So like doing that just with the raw images isn't super easy, right? But using it from Cloudinary is just like one extra thing that you pass into it. So we can definitely do that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Efficiently encode images, that's the same thing. Um, Cloudinary will help us with that. Properly size images, obviously my headshot is way too big. Uh, and actually just converting that into Cloudinary and, and serving the right size uh, and not having to go in and do that in, um, in like, you know, Photoshop or resize it uh, manually will, will go a long way. Uh, let's see, main thread work. Well, what do we have here? See, style and layout, that's one of the things I want to maybe do critical CSS or even uh, Andy Bell does the thing where he uh, he actually is inlining all of his styles. He's not even, I don't think, making an external style request and he's using includes in his 11D to do that. Uh, and he's only loading into the page the CSS he needs for that page, which I have to probably reorganize a lot of my, uh, a lot of my CSS to do that. But you can see the time spent on style and layout is pretty heavy. So we'll, we'll look into that a little bit maybe. Um, I'm actually interested to note that I don't actually have a huge amount coming from 
um, for my JavaScript, which here's the only thing I've got with the JavaScript and pre-connect to required origins, and that's the, the Google Analytics. Uh, so I might, this might be an easy, quick fix to go ahead and toss this uh, on those script tags um, to get those to speed up a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and come on over. I've got a new branch for performance, and let's go ahead and make that change real fast. And we can even see, maybe potentially live, uh, how that's going to work. Do not disturb mode turned on. Open up messages on my other window. Come on up here. Let's see. So let's go to our base template, base.nunjux, and let's find our script for analytics. All right, so see this is where like, I'm, I'm like, can Google Analytics with Tag Manager even do this, uh, what it's recommending? I love when Google tells me to do something that its own tools don't do particularly well. Uh, Pre-connect to required origins. Link rel pre-connect. Okay. Improved, blah, blah, blah. Informs the browser that your page needs to establish a connection to another origin and that you'd like the process to process start as soon as possible. Okay, so let's see if this gets us what we want. Link pre-connect and then the origin is going to be the full domain. that, I believe. Uh, this lets the browser know that the page intends to connect to example.com and retrieve content from there. Bear in mind that while link rel pre-connect is pretty cheap, it can still take up valuable CPU time, particularly on secure connections. Excellent. Okay, well, is this going to help or is this not going to help? Link rel DNS prefetch is another link type related to connections. This handles DNS lookup only. Okay, don't need to worry about that, I don't think. Let's see. Resource hints to establish early connections to both of these, which, you know, I really need to get off Google Analytics, but it's nice to know what people are doing on the site. Let's see. I got Netlify Analytics on this site, but they're not quite as in-depth as I'd like. What's wrong with GA? It's just more scripts on the page, more, more bloat for the page. There's nothing, I mean, there's... Plenty wrong with it from like a philosophical standpoint of I'm giving all my users data directly to Google and letting them do whatever they want with it really. Um, but the main thing is it does add load time. It's another, it's two other, as we're finding out, two other connections, two other HTTP requests we have to make. Plus their code I'm sure is bloated to some degree. There's a lot of stuff it's doing. I'm using Tag Manager, which means I've got some other stuff that fires on different events. So it does, it, it is a performance hit. Um, but not a significant one, as it turns out, with the, with the current um, thread that I've got here. All right, so let me go ahead and open up the local version. Am I running it? I'm not. Uh, Netlify dev is the command to run here. Netlify dev. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Hi, I recently switched to Fathom Analytics. It's neat and less creepy. I, I've heard of Fathom. Um, I don't remember uh, who showed it to me. It showed it to me maybe a, couple, a month or two ago. Uh, it was the first I'd heard about it. Um, yeah, it's not free. I mean, technically, Netlify uh, Analytics aren't free either. Um, I get it for free because I'm, I'm a Net Netlify friend. I've been with them long enough that they gave me a special tier on that. Um, but uh, Amplitude, interesting. Oh, Amplitude, Amplitude. Let's see, I'm curious about that. That's very true, Full Stack Live. If, if it's free, it, it, you are the product or your users are the product. So it's like Google Analytics, my user's data is the product, um, which doesn't feel good either. Uh, analytics. Yeah, and, all, and like all of these, I, I always kind of think about what the... Uh, what the performance cost is as well. And at least with like Google, I know that like their stuff is decently optimized, but 
how nice uh, amplitude's got a nice little UI. I think Fathom when I looked at it, the UI was pretty lacking at the time. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. I should have my local up now. Localhost 8080, There's my smiling face. And I was apparently zoomed way out. There we go. And now let's see. Kind of curious if the generate report will show that change now that I've made that change here. Has anyone, uh, while running uh, Lighthouse uh, in Chrome, navigated to a new tab and had Lighthouse actually fail? Uh, I get that a lot, actually. Interesting, the performance locally is pretty rough. I think that's maybe because I'm running some stuff in the background. I'm not sure about that. Um, let's see. Enable text compression, minify CMS, main thread work. Enormous network payloads. 3,000 kilobytes is enormous. I wonder why that's so much bigger locally. Jamstack pod promo. I don't even know what that image is, to be perfectly honest. Oh, not gzip locally. That makes sense. Good call. Good call. The things that we get for free on the, on the server. Or at least for free for me. Um, that makes perfect sense, yeah. Of course, that's another thing, right? Like, it probably shouldn't even be that big un-gzipped. Like, it's, a, it's an SVG. I mean, come on. Um, it's a, it's a really compl complicated SVG, which I shouldn't have that one be an SVG. These, this one and this one worked out pretty well. This one's not bad as an SVG, but... Uh, okay, let's see. Execution time. That's browser sync, yeah. All right, so I don't see that same one. So I'm kind of curious. I'm going to go ahead and let's make this a, let's go ahead and push this up to a branch and we'll do a, a deploy preview on it and we'll see if we get it on the, on the server as well. Status, git, commit, uh, adds, pre-connect for analytics. New origin performance. This should give us a subdomain on Netlify. I think I have to actually do a pull request the way I have it set up right now. Um, but we can do that. Not a big deal. Let's see. I don't... Okay, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, pull requests. Let's see. Bug fix, for example. I don't even remember what these are. Uh, compare and pull request here. Create pull request. Head on over to Netlify, get our Netlify preview deploy. How's everyone doing with uh, week two of of isolation, or at least week two or three or wherever wherever you are? How many, however many weeks you've been in? Deploy previews and queued. Don't enqueue me. Motivation is really hard right, right now, Ryan. I'm I'm right there with you. It's not, it's not easy. Um, that's you know partially why I decided like this was what to do because there's a, a clear defined end goal, like knowing that I've got this one thing that I can I can master, I can get to, uh, helps. I haven't done much work outside my full time job. L luckily, I don't have a full time job, but unluckily, that means that like my motivation is even lower. It's a lot harder to to get things going. Um, so I, I feel you, I feel you. Um, it is not easy right now. Let's see. All right, we have our deploy, we have our preview. Let's open it on up. Let's go ahead and open up those Lighthouse tools again. Generate report. Now theoretically, I should this should be higher than uh, than what we have on the live site. So we'll, we'll compare those numbers too. It's COVID-19, I don't have any social contacts. I'm working alone in my home. <laughs> yeah, there's still, there's still some stuff about that. I understand. Whoa, my performance also took a hit on the 
dev side, which is interesting. I wonder if they're not doing, Netlify's not doing the same things. There were issues affecting this run of Lighthouse. Extensions negatively affected this page's load performance. Try auditing the page in incognito. Okay. I don't think I have any extensions running, but that's fine. I'll do what you tell me, Chrome DevTools. Open it up in incognito. We'll inspect it again. Yeah, I mean, but there's, there's still like, I don't know, there's a different feeling because like not being able to like go at a moment's notice somewhere and like worrying about touching the wrong thing or I don't know, infecting other people or all sorts of stuff. Still, still really low. Um, why is that? Okay, probably size images. That's still what we had. That's still what we had. Fonts are always going to be fun. I don't know why I'm getting such a low score compared to uh, compared to the live site. That's really interesting. Hmm. Let's see, uh, nothing changed my day-to-day -day routine either, but still, just yeah, like seriously, I, I feel you, Ryan. Uh, Talibi says, trying to stay positive and motivate myself. Started this week on Twitter with some positivity. Hopefully folks join in. Zoom calls, yeah. Um, that can that can be a way to go. I, I know that the uh, the new dynamic uh, Slack group was doing some of that uh, this weekend, or Saturday? Friday? All the days kind of blend together. That's one of my issues. Like, not having my son's, like, preschool schedule and not having, like, I don't know. Feels weird. It's hard to keep track of what day it is. So what, what did I get on my score up here? Oh, I guess I had really crappy performance here too. Uh, interestingly enough. Hmm. Although one has to wonder how Zach got me at like a 94, I think, for my performance rating in Lighthouse. Uh, hey, Naren, welcome to the stream today. So. All right, but I don't, I don't see, what was it called? It was down here, it was the pre-connect to required origins. Um, so that means if we come here, do we have that? No, we don't have that anymore. So we at least have, have that down in the good stuff. Um, hey, your latency's better, that's good. Four seconds is way better than the 20 seconds it used to be. Um, all right, so let's let's take a look at Cloudinary now. Let's let's see if we can get some image stuff done uh, live as well. So, uh, for those of you not familiar, Cloudinary is a CDN-based media management solution. There's an API. It's actually really really easy. Like as one-offs, you can just like create a new URL. Um, there and today we are working on uh, my blog's speed. My, my, my web performance on the blog so that we can come over to build the 11 um, The 11 site has a leaderboard now and we can climb the ranks and no longer be at 187. Uh, we can be hopefully in the uh, top 100 is the goal. So yeah, we're at Lighthouse score 91, the way that Zach runs it. Uh, we're much worse when, when I'm running it. So we're gonna do images are the big thing, uh, but we saw a quick win that we already kind of uh, pushed out, which was to pre-connect uh, my analytics. Uh, so now uh, browsers that support link rel pre-connect will automatically open up that connection as soon as possible instead of waiting for a little bit. Uh, and that will hopefully uh, make the time to first meaningful paint or contentful paint, I think, quicker because it will make those requests faster. 